Guys, what is up? Welcome back to a brand new video. It has been a while, about a month. Not the longest I've gone without uploading, but still a fair while when I did want to try and sort of increase my consistency within the upload schedule of my channel. However, here we are. In this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly why it's been so long. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So for those of you who follow me on Insta, you may have seen that my car had been broken into. Yep, you heard that correctly. I was essentially robbed while well, me and uh, my girlfriend Deanna. So what exactly happened? Well, I was down in London for a brand deal with Formula E. They invited me down to the city to essentially spectate live some races, Formula E racing, which by the way was absolutely incredible. Honestly, the sound, the sound's ironic. The sound of the cars were actually sick. They sound like a spaceship when they whiz past. <laughs> And now, like, I think to most people, you'd expect there wouldn't be any sound from an electric car, but I've actually got this men menacing sort of... All I can just describe it as is like listening to a Star Wars spaceship when you're watching a Star Wars, Star Wars film and you hear like a TIE fighter go past or something. That's what a Formula E car sounds like. It was sick. <laughs> anyway, that's that's sort of like a different story. So we were there spectating the races. They put us up in a hotel the night before, which was the Ned Hotel. Awesome hotel. Had a great time. Then the morning of the event, there was just stress. Essentially, a guy was supposed to come and pick us up and take us to the event. It was a little bit unorganized. He didn't bother calling us. So we didn't know where he was we didn't know what car he was in um there was like loads of other taxis as well out on the main entrance picking up other guests and other people who were attending the event that i was going to and other events and so i just couldn't pinpoint who the driver was anyway he was standing outside he happened to have been looking at us but the initiative didn't cross his mind of to just come and approach us and say oh are you axel i'm here to pick up axel like it was just a nightmare so we were literally asking every driver until we approached him at the very end of the queue and we're like are you here for us and he was like, yes, I am. And I was just like, oh, God. All right. Anyway, there was like a whole other bunch of stress when we arrived. So the car park at the hotel, it was fully booked. So the Ned had no more spaces available. So they recommended us the next best thing, <laughs> which was the NCP car park in Barbican. Now, I parked at this car park once before, didn't have any issues. So I thought, okay, whatever, it will have to do. Let's go and park there. So we made our way to the NCP Barbican and <laughs> I'm laughing because it was just it was just stress literally getting in must have taken us a good hour i kid you not the barriers would not open the button would not work like nothing was working it wasn't producing a ticket and essentially if you download the app i think you were supposed to get like a, a big discount on your stay so i downloaded the ncp app and like you scan like a barco barcode thing but that wasn't working so then i had to basically try and get through to someone so i was like pressing the call button no one was answering and eventually someone someone answered you couldn't hear them like I uh, shit you not you can't make this thing up like the uh speaker was broken like it sounded like a world war ii piece of radio tech it was literally so quiet and it was like so fuzzy like Shh, and minimal so distant so so distant so i couldn't hear her so i tried another machine tried pressing the uh call button to like speak to staff on that no one's answering the barrier still wouldn't answer like there was a car behind us waiting to like get in it was just it was a mess anyway after about an hour we managed to get through to someone one and uh i swear she told us like some random bull crap like we could just about hear her she told us some random crap about how like no you can't use this app and you can't stay past 24 hours because we wanted to double check whether basically we could stay past 24 hours and use this app to get a discount she was like no you can't stay longer than 24 hours even though on the app like apparently it said you can so we were just like all sorts of confused and then um it like disconnected we tried to ask her some other questions didn't work whatever uh and at this point i was just i was, I was very pissed off i was very very angry uh had to call the um call button on the machine again got put through to a different lady because i found out they all work at like different call centers and there's like a million different people in random locations who take these calls when you press the uh, buttons to speak to staff at ncp um car park so that's quite interesting so for those of you who didn't know that now you do um got th put through to a different woman she then asked for our number because the line was still really bad so she was a legend she uh actually called me um on my uh mobile phone so i could like basically hear her properly and not have 
have to deal with the World War II signal. And then she basically sorted us out, the absolute legend. She said that, yeah, we can use the app. We can stay longer than 24 hours. It'd be this price, blah, blah, blah. So we got let into the car park. I then made my way down into the car park, making lots of noise with my straight through exhaust system, as I do, until we reached, I think it was level two, but underground. So this car park was underground. So I uh, parked down at level two and uh, the car park was full, full of other cars. Loads of people were using it. There were some really nice cars there as well. So there was an Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio in a really nice sort of sea blue. It was beautiful. There was a BMW M4 competition, I believe, that um, was sort of uh, painted in that factory sort of gold. Uh, I'm sure it's not called gold, but you know the one that I mean, that that very sort of like uh, stereotypical BMW gold that uh, they, they, they paint the M4s in and some of the M3s, which looked really, really sick. So yeah, a few other nice cars there. Anyway, I found a spot which was sort of at the end of a row somewhere in the middle. And uh, we went about our day rather so we went to the event carried on as normal i enjoyed the racing um it was a sick day met a lot of other influencers there so uh tom exton from tg was there spoke to him if you're watching this legend really sound bloke had a cool conversation with him there was um olivia coxton there was also some other like photographers videographers youtubers shmi was supposed to be there but he wasn't there on that day because it was a two-day event i think we rocked up on the sunday i remember right it was the saturday it might have been the saturday and um you could basically choose whether to attend the Saturday or the Sunday. I think I'll pick the Saturday. And Joe was there, Joe Waller. Uh, Waller, man, if you're watching this, you're just gonna fucking already hate me. Joe Waller was there. He was there, I believe, with his girlfriend. And um, there was a few other people there. I didn't really speak to Joe, but uh, for the people that I did speak to, um, Ori as well, Ori Styler, the comedian. He was a legend, big up him. Um, yeah, really sound guys. Uh, had food on like this boat on the river. And then we could basically make our way into like the grandstands to basically watch the racing, which we did. And it was sick. It was a good day. Things are uh, picked up. Anyway, the day was over. We then had to make our way back to the car park. Now, this was fun. Oh, by the way, for those of you, I didn't quite explain properly how we got like from the Ned to the event because I, I remembered I was talking about the taxi man coming to pick us up. So that was on the morning of the event. I essentially, before we went, before I went back to the hotel to be picked up, I went to the uh, car park to drop off all my belongings. So with me, I had my laptop, I had my hard drive, I had my clothes all in a rucksack. And I was carrying like a boss bag because a uh, boss sort of sponsored me, I guess you could say, for that event. So they gave me some like clothes to wear. So I had my boss bag with me. So I was basically carrying all of our belongings back to the car on that morning because me and Deanna didn't want to carry it around for the day. So that is basically what I did. Went to the car park with my stuff, dropped off my car, dropped off my car, dropped off my stuff into the boot of the car and then went my way, made my way back to the hotel ready for collection. And that's when like the nightmare sort of started even more so with the driver not knowing who we were and like waiting around forever but anyway yeah so the event uh had finished so we fast forward and again the event's finished for the day made our way back to the car park got the driver to drop us off back to the car park walked down the stairs of the car park and then you know opened a really shitty broken door that like had basically completely have had had all this glass like removed it wasn't shattered or anything but it, it was just yeah a shit door but i don't know why i needed to describe a door but it was crap so walked through it and uh made my way towards the car and like, i saw like all this black stuff on the floor and i sort of thought to myself i was like it looks a bit like oil has my car got an oil leak or has another car had an oil leak it just didn't sort of like click in my mind yet and like my car wasn't fully visible because there was another car parked behind me so i just thought you know a car had an oil leak or something so all these little, little drops on the floor and as i got closer sort of clicked in my brain that it wasn't oil it was in fact glass and sort of initially i thought the worst i was like oh, for fuck's sake i was like i hope no one's smashed my window in that's basically what i thought and uh Lo and behold, as I was sort of like walking around the car that was covering my car parked behind me, looked up, saw that my rear window had in fact been smashed in. I was like, fucking hell, here we go. So it had been smashed in. Now, whoever did it decided to leave a nice little present inside on top of the boot lid. So they'd actually left the rock that they'd used to smash the window and they'd left it on top of the boot lid. And uh, when I actually opened up my boot, so, you know, pressed in the Volkswagen badge, opened it all up, I saw that all of the belongings had been taken. So they're stolen my rucksack with my computer in it my hard drive my clothes everything else i ain't even bothered about the clothes i'm not bothered they stole my house keys i stole my medication as well like i mean who steals medication but there you go I literally must have took the bag and thought fuck it i ain't even bothering to look what's inside it i'm just taking everything but yeah the main thing i was severely and still am severely stressed about is the fact that they took my whole computer
computer with years and years of projects on years and years of music projects years of plugins that i've saved up for for my music software for ableton client work they'd stolen the store stolen like invoices with my financial details on so i had to like cancel all my cards the nightmare they stolen diana's clothes diana's glasses like really expensive sort of limited edition glasses that you can't find anymore and yeah it was it was shit and it still is very very poo to say the least so that's what happened in fact i'll show you the instagram story that i posted now because i saved it to my phone of when i found my car in the state that it was so just come to my car in london ncp barbican supposed to be a safe space you'd say it was a safe space underground parking of cars a lot of cars around here you know yep yeah, yeah, okay nothing out of the ordinary being pantomime and this has happened and they've robbed my bag my girlfriend's bag my bag had a laptop in it with years and years of work stored onto the internal hard drive and other stuff that I won't even go into detail about. But what's interesting is they've just knocked through my rear window and decided to leave the rest of the car. I mean, they could have, you know, whilst they were at it, just made an absolute mess of the uh, very costly wrap, but they haven't. They haven't decided to uh, try and smash in the driver's window or steal the car or anything. I mean, not that they'd be able to because I haven't got the ticket anyway. So, I mean, I don't know, but surprises me that they wouldn't have tried to attempt something else, so. So yeah, that had happened. And that is essentially why I have not uploaded in a fair while because I've had no device to edit on. I really thought I would have been in the poo for a lot longer than, I mean, I, I still am in the poo. I've lost like so much and it's gonna take me so long to rebuild. But thanks to some amazing people and um, a granddad who is absolutely legendary, he has helped me immensely sort of at least get getting back my device so I can actually edit. So I've got a computer again. I can now, you know, save up for all my plugins again start working i mean the main thing is i can start working now for those of you who don't know i've got a bit of a portfolio career so one of my jobs if you like is uh videography for for clients so i do like client promo videos and social media management etc so you know i rely on tech a lot and until that happened i didn't really realize how much i do rely on technology but yeah luckily i didn't have my um big main dslr that i'm filming on now with me so we didn't steal that i think that would have topped it off if like all my camera gear was stolen but that wasn't with me at the time so that was a bonus and yeah and now some of you might still be asking yeah but why did you have your computer with you on your hard drive essentially i take my computer with me everywhere because i've got stuff that i need to edit work that i need to check up on and wherever i am i like to just you know have my computer because i use it a lot and then you're probably thinking why do you put your bags in the back of the boot well i've always tend to put my stuff in the back of uh, my boot in my car i've never had any issues and obviously you've got the boot lining that covers it so it's not visible so they could have couldn't have seen it so that makes me then think maybe i was followed on that morning of the event to my car when I was putting the belongings in it. I don't know. I couldn't see anyone and I didn't see anyone lurking around dodgy in the car park. In fact, there was no one in the car park when I put my stuff in there, but I don't know. That's the only sort of logical explanation. Maybe someone was a very good hider and they, they followed me to the car park. It was a targeted sort of theft because it was very precise. Like they literally only launched a stone in the back of my windscreen and uh, left the rest of the car completely untouched. Didn't bother like scratching or damaging the wrap, stealing anything else like from, from the front of my car and in, in my door cards or they didn't try stealing the car itself from what I could tell so very bizarre so it sort of seems to me like it was targeted and they knew, knew what they wanted so then the only way they could have known that was like I say if they followed me on that morning but there we go there we go there we go I'm not going to bore you anymore that's 13 minutes of talking I'm sure if you haven't already you're going to want to shoot yourself so I'm going to end the video there that's what happened I'm back here we are woohoo I'm going to try and I always say it to make consistent content again I'm really busy at the moment but I'm going to do my best to, to bring you back the sort of fun automotive related videos and whatever else you know you want to see and enjoy to see i do have a new album on the way luckily all my days luckily i back up the files of my new album onto another hard drive at home otherwise that would have completely completely written me off but i still am able to power the album i can't go back and edit the projects but what i've got is gonna have to do and i put a damn 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 lot of work into this so i'm excited to bring you that i've also got a music video i've been working incredibly hard on with a friend of mine called jake so he's been sort of taking a lead with editing and, and a lot of the production on that. So very exciting times. And yeah, I'll, 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 I won't say no more. You know, I'll let the sort of work speak for itself, if you will. Guys, hope you're doing better than I have been doing as of recent. And uh, you've uh, not had to deal with any sort of robberies or, you know, having your life's work taken away from you. But yeah, uh, take it easy, guys. As you can tell, I'm trying to keep positive, keep my head up. And I'm fucking rebuilding. I'm going in hard and yeah. 
I'm not going to let shite stop me, shall we say. So, there we go. Guys, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Keep an eye out for new content to come. Uh, see you soon. Peace.